Basketball season has finally arrived, not only for Duke men's basketball, but Kara Lawson and the women's squad are getting set for a really exciting 2022 and 2023 season ahead of them. On today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils, super excited. My buddy Chris Edwards is back with us. A lot to talk about, so let's get right to it. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson, and it's so great to have you here with us on the show today. So much fun things set to be discussed here on the program as Duke women's basketball season is upon us. We're going to be breaking down the upcoming year with the radio play-by-play voice of Duke women's hoops, Chris Edwards. So that's going to be an incredible conversation. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our show wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you're listening on the Apple Podcast platform, I greatly appreciate those five-star ratings and reviews. Apple Podcasts loves those algorithms that factor in written reviews, so your support means the world there. We're also on YouTube each and every day. Go to our YouTube page, subscribe to watch the show daily. Your support means the absolute world. Show updates and uploads are also found on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. And you can follow me on Twitter as well at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. Without further ado, I'm so fired up. Once again, he's back with us. Our really good friend Chris Edwards is here with us on the program. One of the very first guests on Locked On Blue Devils. But it has been forever since he's been on the program. So, Chris, thanks for accepting my invite to come back on the show, man. JJ, always great to be with you. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, we've got a lot to get to. Basketball season is here. Can you believe it? Like, November's already here. Here we are. We're off and running. It's really crazy. It feels like the season just ended yesterday, and now we've gone through the whole gamut of fall sports. It's been a great fall for the Blue Devils, and now fired up to get things going on the hardwood uh, with Coach Lawson and the squad here in just a couple of days. Yeah, so obviously you talk about Duke basketball. The men's team comes to mind so quickly for so many, and they've had so much coverage uh, over 41 years of Coach K's run, and then there are so many big narratives and storylines going into the first season of John Shire. But the women's team is equally as intriguing with what Kara Lawson has been able to do. So kind of catch us up to speed, Chris. Remind folks, how did last season go for Duke women's basketball? Yeah, probably a little disappointing. I think if you ask people the way things finished up, the Blue Devils didn't make the NCAA tournament right there on the cusp. Had a couple of tough losses there toward the end of the season. Uh, but but I think there's a lot of excitement about this team moving forward into to this season, right? There's a lot of returning faces from last year, a lot of new pieces that the Blue Devils are going to integrate. And I really believe this is going to be an NCAA tournament team once we look up on Selection Monday and kind of see where the Blue Devils are at through the ACC season, which is going to be really tough. Again, I, I think this is going to be a really fun team to watch and excited to have the, the front row seat to watch this squad uh, beginning in a couple of days. So roster-wise, you take a look at last year's squad compared to this one. Any key players that have graduated, moved on uh, to the next stage of their life, or or who are kind of the key pieces that Duke might have to uh, replace this season? Yeah, I think there's a couple post players that you look at from last year that, that, that are, you're going to miss, a couple of shooters as well. But obviously, Mila Goodchild was a phenomenal three-point shooter for the Blue Devils, one of the best three-point shooters in program history. She graduated. Jade Williams, Wanamay Akinbadi James, also graduated as well. Uh, they were big post players for the Blue Devils for four years. Mila was a big post player, a uh, big uh, shooter for her four-year career, uh, the data from Australia. So those are some key pieces the Blue Devils will have to replace. I think they have done that and done exceptionally well replacing those pieces. And there's a lot of familiar faces that fans are going to recognize from last year that are back on this team uh, this season. So you take a look at this year's squad and Carol Lawson goes into another season. Uh, what was the focus of the offseason? And knowing, like you said, that it was a little bit of a disappointing end to the season, that Duke did not make the NCAA tournament uh, despite having a couple of big wins a season ago, it, it kind of fell off at the end. So offseason, what was the big focus for this team, do you think? Yeah. I think consistency, I think also improving, and I think the Blue Devils did that. I mean, all accounts for the Blue Devils have been 
really good, really consistent. I think adding depth was probably the one big thing for Duke. And when you look at this team, JJ, this year, boy, it's a really, really deep squad. This is probably the deepest Duke basketball team that I've seen in my time uh, covering the Blue Devils. And this is year seven or eight uh, with, with the women's basketball program. I really like the depth of this squad. I like the, the different pieces that Duke has added, and they're going to be able to mix and match. I don't think you're going to to see the Blue Devils maybe go with a consistent lineup. I think it kind of depends game by game. I uh, was talking with Coach about it a couple of weeks ago, and I think maybe if there's a, a game where you want to go bigger, want to go smaller, maybe you want to mix and match, Duke has the ability to do all of those things. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of different styles played across the ACC, and I think Duke can probably match any style that's played in the league this season. Tell me a little bit about some of the newcomers that are going to factor into this year's squad. Yeah, a really a lot of really talented pieces on this club. Ashlyn Jackson is a really talented freshman. If anybody was at Countdown a couple of weeks ago, you saw Ashlyn in that three-point shooting contest for the Blue right. uh, I mean, man, Kennedy Brown on the post has been so impactful already. She's a transfer uh, for the Blue Devils. Reagan Richardson, a Georgia transfer, also uh, really impactful too. You got um, Mia Heidi, who's going to be great. I mean, just, just so many different pieces. And now one of the pieces that – or new, is new for the Blue Devils this year, but not really new that I'm most excited about, JJ, I think is Jordan Oliver. You know, she was with the team last year, the Baylor transfer, injured, didn't play, and now she's back for the Blue Devils. And just such a physical presence as a, from a guard perspective. She can just take the game over, I, I, I think. And, and I really think from that point guard position, being able to have uh, Jordan out there and really running the show offensively, that's going to be a big difference maker for Duke. I mean, look, we, we've – talked about all these players and there's so many other players we haven't even talked about for this Duke team. And you look down the list and we've mentioned Richardson, we mentioned Kennedy Brown, we mentioned all these other uh, transfers, these rookies, the, the list goes on and on. And it's going to be somebody different. I think every single night that's going to have the big impact for the Blue Devils. Can't wait to see what the year looks like again. Here we are on the eve of another college basketball season, getting started off and rolling officially uh, next week with competition set to be played with wins and losses that will count against Duke's record. So it is here. It is here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're certainly really excited about it. We'll talk a little bit more about that schedule in particular and more in just a moment here on Locked On Blue Devils. Locked On Blue Devils here today is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. This is absolutely the easiest place to spice up your college football season. You've got to participate in Underdog Fantasy when you're watching your favorite team play college football. And hopefully – it's the Duke Blue Devils when you're doing that. It's so easy to play, and it's available in over 30 states. Just pick between two and five players across any team, and it doesn't have to just be Duke players, and decide if they will finish higher or lower than their projected point totals. For example, Riley Leonard would finish higher or lower, 150 passing yards. That's how simple it is to play underdog fantasy. It's one of the easiest places to play fantasy, and you can win cold, hard cash in one single game. Sign up today with promo code Locked On. That's one word, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. And Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. If you deposit $100, you get $100 free. Go to underdogfantasy.com or find the Underdog Fantasy app in the App Store or Google Play Store. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code Locked On. Get in on the college football pick -em action today. We welcome you back into today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. I'm JJ Jackson alongside Chris Edwards, talking about Duke women's basketball, getting set for the upcoming year. A couple of key pieces are returning for Duke. Uh, and then more importantly, the head coach is back yet again yeah. for another season. Carol Lawson, another year as Duke women's basketball head coach. Uh, I, I think we're pretty certain that she is the right person for this job. But uh, for anybody out there, kind of reiterate why it is that Carol Lawson is, in fact, the right coach to lead Duke women's hoops. Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to, to find the superlatives to keep talking about here, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, so many things she's accomplished in her basketball career as a player, as a coach. I mean, obviously the three-on-three -three gold medal at the Olympics had great success with Team USA this past summer as well. She was a gold medalist as a player, WNBA champion, played for Pat Summit at Tennessee. Just the wealth of basketball knowledge that Kara brings to Duke is just unmatched from the women's basketball side. And it's so much fun to sit and, and be around her and watch her teams compete on a night in, night out basis, JJ. And look, the future is super bright for this program. And as we said earlier, this is, in my estimation, an NCAA tournament team this year for Coach Lawson and the Blue Devils. 
Chris, it's really hard for a, uh, a women's college basketball coach to go viral in the summer. It's yeah. really hard to do yeah. that. And, and yet, Kara Lawson was able to uh, over the summer. Duke put out a video of her addressing the team, uh, kind of a motivational speech, if you will, uh, talking to the team, saying life is not going to get easier. You've just got to find a way to handle hard better. And it was so amazing just to see so many people from different walks of life, from different occupations, from different whatever it may be, and able to kind of apply that message that she presented to her team, again, in the summer at a workout, and all of a sudden you saw the impact that it had across so many. That was like a, a real moment where I was like, wow, that is, a, one, just such an inspiring speech that she had for the team. Everybody was so engaged and, and, and kind of into it, and it, it hit home for me, certainly. Uh, that was a really cool moment to see over the summer. Yeah, and that's the second straight summer that's happened too. Yeah. Remember, it was another viral video last summer, the summer before uh, as well. So, I mean, it's just every time she speaks, you learn something, right? And it's just so insightful and so impactful. And again, I'm lucky to be able to, to have a chance to sit down and talk a lot with her. And we do the radio shows together and uh, just, just the conversations that we have. Every time we talk, I feel like I learn something and I become better just because I get a chance to listen to her talk on a day in day out basis. And so we all feel really fortunate to be able to learn from Kara every single day. Taking a look at this Duke women's basketball team getting set for this upcoming season. You mentioned there are a couple of players that we haven't even mentioned uh, that are set to make an impact going into the year. Uh, one of those Shay day Wilson, a freshman a season ago uh, was really fun to watch all of a sudden uh, contributing. Wasn't always starting for this year's Duke team and would come off the bench and be perfect from the three-point line in a game or make a key pass down the stretch and that sort of thing. So we're getting set for the second season of Shea Day-Wilson. What in the world is that going to look like? If yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. ACC All-Freshman or Freshman of the Year uh, last year by the head coaches in the league, led the team in scoring almost 13 points per game, can impact the game in a variety of ways, can shoot, as you mentioned, from the outside. She can drive, she can pass. I mean, really can do everything for the Blue Devils. I mean, started the last 17 games of the year a season ago, led all the ACC freshmen in terms of scoring. So it's going to be so much fun to see the jump, right? Because I think a lot of times, if year one to year two, that that's the biggest maturation, perhaps. To borrow a football analogy, you know, they say that you get better from week one to week two. That's the biggest improvement for a football team. It's going to be interesting this year in year two for Cheyenne to see how teams adjust to her. You know, now like last year, she kind of burst on the scene and teams you saw maybe the second time through started to account for her a little more. She became more of a focal point of the scouting report. It'll be interesting this year, uh, year two, how do teams adjust? And then what are the adjustments to the adjustment? I think that's the most interesting part is the game within the game, the adjustment to the adjustment. How do teams adjust to her? And now she's got so many more pieces around her. We talked about Jordan Oliver and how dynamic and how impactful it's going to be to have Jordan running the point some this year for the Blue Devils if she does go that route. I mean, the Blue Devils have got so many different weapons. you got Cheyenne Day Wilson. We had to talk about Celeste Taylor, who's back, who was so good for the Blue Devils last year. Elizabeth Balagoon is back again for Duke this year, too. So th there are some pieces. Shoot, we haven't even mentioned Vanessa DeJesus and how impactful she was. We talk about another sophomore making a jump this year. Lee Volker was really impactful for the Blue Devils last year, played 20 minutes or more in the last five games of the season. So Volker is better and back. And so there, there's just so many pieces, JJ. We talked about the depth earlier, and you run down the roster, and you're like, yeah, they can make an impact. They can make an impact. They can make an impact. There's just a night-in, night-out basis. It's going to be somebody different for this team. So it may not be Day Wilson every night. It may not be Taylor. It may not be whoever, whoever. It might be somebody new every single game. And that's, I think, the most exciting part about this team is the depth that Kara Lawson and her staff have gone out and cultivated uh, in the offseason. Depth is such a great thing for any basketball team for, to have, for any team, uh, in any sport to have. And it's great to hear uh, that Duke is in that situation going into this upcoming season. Uh, with Cheyenne Day Wilson being the leading scorer a year ago, if you were to project, can she duplicate that, Chris? Or do you think there is a bit of a step off and it truly will be the ability for so many people to put the ball in the basket that maybe another player steps up and yeah. it's the leading scorer? 
I don't think it's anything against Day Wilson or against anybody else. I'm just, I don't know that right now you can project who the leading scorer is going to be. I think there are so many weapons, and this is such a balanced team, JJ. I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to contribute to this team. And I think here in you know early November, it's kind of hard to project who's going to be the focal point for this team because the Blue Devils have so many options. All right. Tell me about the schedule. Tell me about the schedule for Duke Wounds basketball. Uh, we've got non-conference games here before uh, the turn into the new year. and We'll see more ACC teams on the schedule for Duke women's basketball. But uh, how did the schedule shape up this season? Yeah, opening the season uh, in a couple of days against North Carolina A&T at Cameron, uh, an 11 a.m. game, kind of a, a basketball doubleheader, a day-night yeah. doubleheader. The men will play later that night, so the women get going uh, at 11 a.m. Then Charleston Southern at home kind of to start the season. I, I think it, when you look at this schedule for the Blue Devils, you notice, man, a lot of away games for Duke in the non-conference, and that was by design. I think the staff wanted the Blue Devils to, to be battle-tested once we get into the ACC season, hopefully into the NCAA tournament, having to go on the road, maybe playing in a hostile environment, hopefully hosting some games at Cameron in the NCAA tournament as well. Uh, but then – over Thanksgiving, a neutral site tournament out in Portland, part of the, the PK event out there playing UConn, who's going to be a really tough opponent, obviously, on Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. Then you've got either Iowa or Oregon State, two really good programs as well. I mean, everybody knows about UConn, right? And then yeah. you got Iowa maybe in game two, Iowa, who the Blue Devils played in the ACC Big Ten Challenge last year. Uh, they've got Caitlin Clark, one of the best players in the country, Oregon State, a chance to play another Power 5 program perhaps. You've got Northwestern on the schedule, too, in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Uh, Texas A&M at home, I mean, that, that's another SEC program. So the Blue Devils are going to be battle-tested before we even get to ACC play. And then you get to league play, and the conference didn't do the Blue Devils a whole lot of favors when you open up with NC State and Louisville, two of your first three games in ACC action, including Louisville on New Year's Day at home. So it, it'll be tough, but I think that's by design. And I think when you look at what the Blue Devils want to do from a season standpoint, what their goals are to get to the NCAA tournament, the schedule is going to help the Blue Devils get there. For folks, For folks watching on YouTube, YouTube, you can you see, see your Twitter, Twitter handle Twitter right there, 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 at Chris underscore underscore Edwards there. there. Tell me about uh, how folks can follow your work, how they can listen to your play-by-play -play throughout the season. Yeah, thanks for asking. Uh, the easiest way for everybody is just through the Varsity Network app. It's a free download. Just download the app, search for Duke Women's Basketball. We'll be there every single game uh, with pregame coverage, the game, the postgame show. Uh, Kara's radio shows will also air on the Varsity Network as well. Uh, so you can download that app. You get women's basketball, you get men's basketball, football, baseball, the whole gamut. It's all right there for you, uh, Duke women's basketball, and every other Duke sport that we have available on the radio. And so before we get out of here, I did want to bring up that that men's basketball team because folks got to watch the uh, Countdown to Craziness event, and you were the play-by-play -play announcer for Countdown to Craziness there for SEC Network Extra. Uh, what stood out to you? What do you like about John Shire's first squad, Chris? Yeah, I like a lot of things about this squad. And, I, you know, I think the most exciting part is that there's still a work in progress, right? I mean, there's still a couple guys that, that we didn't see in Countdown, the number one, number two recruits nationally coming in for Coach Shire. So as good as the Blue Devils were and as balanced as they were in Countdown, they're only going to get even better when they get everybody healthy, get their full complement of players back. I mean, it's going to be a, a fun team to watch. I think you can see the Blue Devils scoring at many different levels, many different options, kind of like Coach Lawson's team, right? I mean, Shire and Coach Shire and Coach Lawson, they kind of got that depth thing going on on both sides. So I think it's going to be a fun winter. Uh, and Cameron, if you're a Duke basketball fan, you should come out to men's and women's basketball because you're going to see an exciting brand of basketball on both sides, men and women this year. Make it happen. Chris, as always, I really appreciate your time. Thanks for chatting with me here today on Locked On Blue Devils. Always, JJ. Thanks for having me on. That is Chris Edwards joining us here on the program today. And that concludes another amazing episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Do make sure that you are listening and supporting the Blue Devil Network with the great coverage that they have of Duke athletics throughout the season. I certainly will be doing the same and love that uh, Chris Edwards has become a such a dear friend of mine as well. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our podcast wherever you get them. If you're watching us on YouTube, press the subscribe button as well. Your support means the absolute world. That's going to do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you soon. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.